Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to episode 200 of the 8-Bit Adventures podcast. Sorry for the late start. Uh, Windows is awful, and Discord is awful. They're both awful. So <laughs> that is why uh, we, are, we are starting quite late. Um, yeah. Uh, so in keeping with 8-Bit Adventures podcast tradition, uh, having tech issues on very important episodes. So, yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's so what happened is um, apparently it must have been like something in the folder or settings got corrupted because there was all sorts of JavaScript errors after restarting, after doing a Windows restart, of course, because that's when all my problems happen. And yeah. uh, so I had to restart again, didn't fix it. Then I had to delete the folder, reinstall it. And then we had to troubleshoot some audio issues. Um, so, yeah, so here we are. But we finally <laughs> made it. Uh, and this was also I fell asleep uh, and had been sleeping a bit longer than I had intended to. And so was just scarfing down food right before we were supposed to go live. Things happen. Yay. These things definitely happen. <laughs> uh, oh, I should also post that we're live on Facebook. Not that anyone will yeah. see it, but you know. Not that oh. anyone will see it. Yeah. Well, I'm sure some people will see it. Nope. Well, people nope. will see it when it's too late. <laughs> yeah. Our 200th episode. This is making mm -hmm. for great, great podcast material. <laughs> but yes, unfortunately, this is this is what happens when computers decide to not compute. <laughs> yeah. But that's OK, listeners. I got through the semester. So Yay. things are Yeah. That's that's the that's the big Courtney news follow up. Is I did it. I did it. Couldn't believe it. But it happened. <laughs> Alrighty. There we <clears throat> go. So cool. uh, basically we've got a couple of interesting items in the quick fire news this week. And then um, for our deep dive, we were just going to essentially do, um, oh, what do they call it? A retrospective? Yes. Sort of uh, an impromptu retrospective on, uh, on our past 200 episodes. Sorry. I'm still going to put, put a lot of weight on that because that's a big achievement for a lot of podcasts. Yeah. The average we've, podcast we've... does not make it past seven episodes. Which is just wow. Well, it's because it, it usually everything falls apart by then. Um, <laughs> but then if you also figure that's an average, that means like many fall apart. Like, you know, if, if you assume outliers, many fall apart, like after one or two episodes, which accounts for, yeah. you know, balancing Why out the so ones low. that last quite a long time. Yeah, I mean, because if you average 52 weeks a year or if you, you have 52 weeks a year and knowing that we've taken some, you know, we've taken holiday breaks, we've taken, you know, wedding breaks, baby breaks, all of that type of thing. Um, we've been doing this for over four years now. Because we do one episode a week. Oh, yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is, we've, we're still here. <laughs> mm-hmm. But. Yeah, I mean, we're still a little bit behind, you know, the Critical Role team, but I think they had an extra year on us. I think maybe? so. Yeah. So suck it. <laughs> Critical Role. <laughs> Actually, they're very nice people. Please, please don't. <laughs> please don't. I'm, be I'm bad like, at them. I'm like, don't for, don't forget to love each other. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I had contemplated putting something up about uh, like take that Firefly, uh, and I felt yeah. that was a little, oh. that was a little demeaning and mean. Oh, oh, too soon. I man. also, uh, despite having, you know, watched the whole series um, and having it on the box set and everything or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. I, I think that people overhype it too much. 
I, I don't think, think it actually fact, is as good as people think it is. I think it's the fact that that's the only bit that we get. I think part of the mystique is that it only be- has that like half a season. And that's and, why. And the people... fact that more was planned. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it definitely. I really like it, though. It's it's something that I'll put on. It's a comfort show. Like, I, I don't think it's actually. I don't think it can hold a candle to Mandalorian. Shots no fired. <laughs> yeah. But man. that's also the Mandalorian is very good. So that that's more of why that is. <laughs> and they're kind but. of in the same genre. So. so why don't we get into our quick fire news though, Sean? Yeah, let's get into quick fire news. That's the wrong one. There we go. That's the wrong one. <laughs> and then we, we had the right one. Oh, geez. Now, this is what happens when <laughs> Sean is not supposed to take naps. And this is what happens when he takes naps. Oh, All right. yeah. So, <laughs> um, so basically, we got a bunch of bad news <laughs> to report yeah. on. Uh, DuckTales. So the reboot series, Disney confirmed it'll end with season three little sad um they didn't really Um, cite why um yeah current prevailing theory is that uh it's on disney xd which is a premium channel that most people don't get yeah um and uh that it would make far more sense nowadays to release it on disney plus instead of releasing it to disney Mm -hmm. xd because also disney xd has this problem of having weird release schedules for new episodes for shows. They don't just like, like if you're going to have a 20 episode season, they don't do it like 20 weeks in a row at the same time of having a new episode. It's like, Oh, you know, we got a new episode coming up on Saturday and then like two and a half weeks from now will be another new episode. It's like not even on the same day. Yeah. So it's like, remember that's, that's a big, it's really hard when you don't know when something's going to be on. Yeah. And it's it's something that you want to be watching, but there's no consistency in when it comes out. Yeah, I, and that's the key. Or yeah, there's no consistency. When it's, played. it's not like you know. I mean, heck, just take a Harry Potter marathon. You know when those are going to be played nonstop on like TBS or whatever, or uh, well, whatever other fam, whatever other website. Uh, previously, it was Freeform, Scott's and it was every Saturday. TV channel. There we go. It's going to be playing on. Yeah. <laughs> Um, There's just a little of everything. So, yeah. So I'm a little sad about um, that. Um, It looks like they're going to be kind of bad news, but honestly, not so not terrible. Um, Scott Pilgrim versus the world. The remastered game has been pushed to January 2021. Yeah. I say this is kind of good news because it's not canceled. (laughs) Well, no, it's not. But it was supposed to be for Christmas. Oh, no. That was that's why it's bad news. Oh. Lost Courtney. There we go. Now she's back. So yeah, it's, it's just pushed back <clears throat> to like mid January. So very minor thing, but for those of you like me who were hoping to have it for Christmas, you will not get it for Christmas. Um, yeah. Again. And there's not really a reason why. Um, so uh, now for some good news. Persona yeah, five strikers coming news. into Nintendo switch, February, 2021. So this is kind of Persona spin-off game. <clears throat> it's not <clears throat> excuse me. It's not quite Persona 5. <clears throat> it's almost kind of like uh um Dynasty Warriors sort of the warrior style games um where it's like you're getting thrown against a bunch of enemies or you might get into a party. It's a li- little more like action adventure game than persona typically is where it's, you know, typically like a turn-based um, fighting style game. I mm-hmm. don't know if it's going to have all of the subsystems that persona has of like, you're a high school student and like you go to class and you answer, you know, tests and take quizzes and stuff to boost your, you know, like mental stat. And then like you go to your job and boost like your, your discipline. And like you go to the ramen shop and, and do that stuff. Um, and, and, and boost your constitution. Um, it does something, um, it might be like social stat, 
Uh, Cause like you're hanging out with your friends at the ramen shop and everything. So friends, fans of fire emblem will, will feel very similar to this if you've never played persona before, but it's doing all sorts of like school related activities to boost your stats and improve your, your character. Um, who like lives in a closet. Yeah. Persona. I have watched gameplay of it, but it's very weird. <laughs> Yeah, it's um everybody's like bound themselves to demons who give them the ability every, to like see does. see what people want in life and like read their emotions and they use this to fight crime. It's very odd and very Japanese. I'm just gonna uh, go with that. Yes, it's it's very Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. Uh, so, um, Cyberpunk 2077, I believe releases yes. at midnight tonight. Uh, uh one thing I as a PSA, so. um, yes. is this was reported by Liana uh, Ruppert of Game Informer, who, um, was sent an advanced review copy, um, that there are uh, a lot of sequences in the game that apparently, um, are particularly triggering for seizures. Um, this came up because it did not, the review copy at least did not actually have a big giant seizure warning. Um, it was kind of like buried in the end user license agreement. Um, so that's why it's attracting headline attention, but, um, sequences known as brain dances, which are used as part of like the story. So there are things that are like unavoidable, apparently, um, it's, they involve a device that your character puts on. But the device um, has lights and patterns similar to what um, actual neurologists use to trigger seizures. So that's like kind of a. Were were you guys thinking about this when you developed this? Uh, Like. So it's not just like one thing if there's it's one thing if there's like a light sequence that happens and like you could you could skip it or it's like a light series that just happens because it's like just a strobe. You know, I know there's a lot of yeah. it's not just like a general strobe effect that like, yeah, we know that can cause seizures, but like that's that's not typically like done for a specific purpose to cause. This is it's mimicking something that is intended to cause seizures in people. So, yeah, if you are someone that either has epilepsy suffers from uh grand mal seizures, which is what, um, uh, Rupert, um, ended up having, um, or any kind of seizure that's triggered by photosensitivity. Um, you may want to one, um, take measures if you're really intent on playing the game. So either if you know that such a sequence is coming up, you may want to set aside, have somebody else play it. Um, yeah. I mean, they recommend, you know, turning on lights and stuff like that, maybe turning say, at down the, the contrast least, on the TV. Game alone. At the very least, don't game by yourself so yeah. that if that does happen, you know, like we're telling you about it, but like in case that does happen, that way they can get you the support and the help that you need if that yeah. does get to trigger, you know. I mean, the, the other very... option is if you are on the fence, I mean, maybe you want to consider giving this game a pass, mm-hmm. which, you know, again, I, I say that thankfully our audience isn't big enough to attract the hatred and ire of cyberpunk 2077 fanboys uh, who are apparently attacking people that have been reporting on this, by the way. Um, but uh, yeah, just this is this is a public service announcement because I know, you know, we have people in our circle that have photosensitivity yep. um, and epilepsy. So <laughs> that is something to think about. Mm-hmm. All right. Last bit of news. Uh, I'm going to say this is this this qualifies as bad news. Uh, but <laughs> Monster Hunter, uh, the film. That's right. The motion picture film starring Mila Jovovich, because it's directed by her husband, um, is releasing on Christmas. I say this is bad because it looks absolutely terrible for everybody that thought like the Warcraft film looked bad. This is like the Warcraft film. This is like 
what happens when you try to do the Warcraft film, but then the studio making it doesn't actually have any investment in the property itself. Um, the idea is she is part of a crack team of uh, elite like special forces units that gets sucked into an alternate dimension ruled by giant monsters and their guns don't work. So they have to build weapons that are native to that world in order to fight the monsters and get back home. It's sort of like Super Mario Brothers where it introduces uh, an alternate dimension plot where none is needed. <laughs> and and it, oh, it just, it looks... So the effects look good and the monsters look good. But... Um, visually stunning? Is that what you would say? Or is visually appealing? But um, the story is not... <laughs> I mean, the story is going to be horrendous. I mean, we're talking like story sort sounds horrendous like. late resident <laughs> evil style quality here um in terms of films uh yeah and here's the thing monster hunter doesn't really have that great of a plot anyway you don't play it for the plot you play it for essentially you play it monster to be a murder monster hobo. fighting yeah it's it's a hearkening back to arcade style games where you played it for gameplay you didn't play it for story and I mean, the, the story is there's big monsters. We got to drive out the monsters. Why are there big monsters? We find out why there's big monsters. And then we tackle that bigger monster. That's the plot of Monster Hunter. Um, also, I have no idea if Palicos are going to be in the film, which would make it better. But I don't trust uh, I don't trust the, the film studio to do them justice. Really? So uh, when, for those that don't know, can't... calicos are tiny little. To call them cat people doesn't describe it correctly because they're not like they're not like cat girls. They're like cats that walk on their their hind legs. And, you know, they have okay. paws, but like, yeah. you know, they wear armor and they wield swords and they cook things for you and they're they're your buddies. So that's they're why... puss in boots. Yes. Yes. That's like, like, yeah, the... it's it's they're yeah. like puss in boots. Yeah. It's like the, so, so they're like Puss in Boots, where he just walks on his hind legs and does everything else, and yes, wears regular clothes and whatnot. Yeah, yes, that is a that is a great way of putting it. They're you know they're little anthropomorphic cat buddies that are about the size of regular cats. That's that's the other key. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I uh, <laughs> oh, it's just thinking about this film gives me. Uh, well, uh, let's stop thinking about it then, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> and let's go into our deep dive. Yeah. All right. So. There we go. Now that's the right sound effect. <laughs> All right. 200 episodes. <laughs> yeah. This is. It's so as I said, like we've been doing this for over four years. Yeah, it's it's been a long time. <laughs> like, yeah. And like I know I haven't been here for every single one. Um No, we were trying but... to get uh past co host Josh York on, but he just remembered at the last minute that it's raid night because you know, there's a new expansion. Because, wow. So of course he's he's already doing raid content. Uh, and he will do that for probably about three months and then burn himself out and then, you know, quit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but. so sadly we couldn't get him. Um, and you know, we were, I was trying to get trying some of the guests that we've had guests. on, but everybody's schedules didn't line up. So, but, uh, just to, just to recall people that we've gotten on the podcast. Um, mm -hmm. so we've gotten, uh, drop some names here. We've gotten one Joey image. Yeah. Of uh, NWA wrestling fame, um, who okay. now um, streams on Twitch and does podcasting of sorts um, and streaming. Um, that one of particular note is great because my audio did not get recorded oh, for that yeah. episode. Um, and I think that was before we streamed the podcast. I think that was the first, that was the second time we had him on, too, though, because you had one with just him. And then there was one with the three of us. Possibly. So it was one of those two, but he, he did, he did come on. He's come on a couple times. Okay. And, so, and but I this remember... time it was, it was the time where it was all three of us. 
and my audio did not get recorded. Courtney's and Joey's did. So then I had to spend the next day uh, listening to their responses and going through the show notes to try and figure out what I had said and then re-record that and then re-edit everything together into a seamless episode (laughs) and try and fool everybody into thinking that there were no problems. Yeah. I think that's uh, been my favorite podcast moment. I think that that's definitely, that's definitely been there because yeah, you, I remember getting the message that it didn't save your audio and I was yeah. like, oh man, that was a really good episode. Are we going to have to scrap it and like tell Joey, sorry, like we yeah. had a, which I refused to another, do. I wasn't going to do it. We had <laughs> another technical issue. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Also, uh, we've had Bo Schwartz. Um mm-hmm who uh, has been on several um, Heroes of the Storm related content now on a general mm-hmm. um, gaming podcast related Frog Pants also does a and d podcast with Frog Pants called There Will Be Dungeons. Um, I think for me, that was him getting him and Joey on the podcast for me was kind of like a big like. Yeah, like, yeah, we're doing it. We're doing podcasts since, you know, they have yeah, like big miles they, since they do much bigger audiences than. Yep. Than you know, than we've done before. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was that was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of you know. Uh, um, we had a we had a great episode with our dear friend Heather, mm-hmm. talking about doing. Uh, and that was recent too, doing um, yeah, tabletop RPG stuff with students. Yep, especially during lockdown. Yeah, or funny, maybe not like during lockdown. Being... Wait, yeah. Uh, it, the lockdown ish work from home remote learning whatever you want to call it but i'm just uh <laughs> using tabletop rpgs to get kids engaged huh. so. um, um man oh another another fun moment uh, i i always enjoy e3 predictions and i mean that's that's something like oh, if you do that, a gaming podcast yeah. and you talk <laughs> about e3 predictions that's yep. always super fun is to see like how in tune mm-hmm. people are with the industry um, and you know, it was a shame that we didn't get Josh on because another one of my favorite moments is the fact that like almost all of his predictions came true, even the absurd ones. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah cause I think it was, were... uh, he was, he had guessed, um, oh, it was, I don't know, but I remember we went out to the forge for wings after that because it was winter, winter, we did. And dinner. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> So it was the four of us for dinner. Oh, it was Contra. He had predicted that it was gonna, there was going to be a new Contra game that comes out in, you know, in 2019. And that's exact. And they announced it like that, you know, like later. It might have even been like that week. It might have yeah, even been before E3. Um, or it might have been like a number one, like a first night type of thing. But yeah, th- then they announced it. Also, it was for Switch that they announced it. So which yeah. was even weirder. Um, <laughs> So you know what? Uh, here's the fun thing. Is <laughs> so uh, I have saved our show notes yep. going all the way back to oh, episode, man, I want to say 43. Uh, 34. I... Sorry, I had to transpose. Yeah. So we're going to we're going to open these up. We're going to take a take a. Dive back here. Um, oh, so this is when we also talked about science on the podcast. Yeah, this uh, is when Courtney would talk about science. <laughs> oh, this is really- when, uh, yeah, Germany had produced a prototype of a, a nuclear fusion reactor. Mm-hmm. And producing stable reactions using 3D magnetic fields. Uh, uh, also, the dinosaur tail. Yeah, that uh, had soft tissue and feathers. That's Zing that Lita was. discovered a dinosaur tail preserved in amber in China, yeah. showcasing feather, soft tissue, and bone structure. Okay, man, these these notes are so different from how we do them now. And, and you went to Northeast Comic Con. Yes, it was. Yeah. Oh man, this is like. Also, this was way oh. back. So this was in December tenth, twenty sixteen was this show Mm -hmm. uh netflix had announced that you will be able to download movies and shows for offline viewing 
Yay. Yeah. Perfect for flights. Which is how <laughs> yes. I survived uh, my trip to Nerdtacular. Mm-hmm. Which is when I bought the tickets. Um, yeah, because I was like five hours in the air total. Uh, flying cross country, basically. And so I downloaded... I want to say it was just five episodes of Voyager, maybe? I think it was Star Trek Voyager. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, oh, oh, let's Let's jump ahead here. Oh, well, I'm looking at our, uh, our episode 36. Uh, this was Christmas Eve 2016 uh, when we were making resolutions for 2017. And I always will remember that resolution, actually, because that was the year that I decided to keep my resolutions short, manageable, and it was Courtney is going to add to her game collection. And even uh, if I only bought one game, I completed my resolution. Um, and I have a, I'm like pretty happy with my game collection now. I don't remember it's... any of the resolutions from that year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, however, we did talk about the, the six year old who purchased $250 worth of Pokemon presents using their mom's phone and mm-hmm. like use it. And it, cause it had the fingerprint reader. So like, taking the mom's hand and like pressing her her fingerprint into the button in order to buy yep. that stuff uh tiny spy in training <laughs> let's jump ahead to episode 50 let's see um we had a bunch of heroes of the storm <laughs> um mstk3 returns Yes. Yep. Uh, they got James Gunn back to do Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, so that was after that whole snafu. Yeah, it was. Um, when would have E3 predictions and- that year been? Oh, we didn't do E3 yeah. predictions that year. In 2017. Um, but sure. uh, they did announce the Animaniacs reboot, which I will say I have watched the full season finally. It's quite oh, yeah. good. Oh, yeah. I I also watched that all in total. Um, I genuinely really love how they break the fourth wall. Like, and I'm sure that they've always I, I never got to watch this as a kid. Like, anybody who's listened for any kind of amount of time knows I didn't really have cable growing up. And so this new Animaniacs, I don't know how well they broke the fourth wall or made fun of themselves um, in the original run. But, like, I I like a show like that. Um, Actually, I recently was watching uh, the new season of Big Mouth. And that season, they're breaking the fourth wall quite a few times. Yeah. Um and I just I genuinely like it. Um and I and I like it when it's just part of the conversation, not like an obvious like look at the camera cash grab like the office or something. But mm-hmm. uh jumping forward to my birthday that year in twenty seventeen. Um oh no, sorry, that's July twenty sixth, so that's a month after my birthday. We don't want that. We want close to my birthday. There we go. <laughs> we didn't have much. We didn't have much. So that's not a very exciting episode. So the problem is I don't all I have are the episode titles and I don't I'm not able to see because uh, Google Docs blurs out the contents slightly. Um uh. Yeah, it's 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 yeah. yeah. We've we've it's talked just, about a lot. quite a, we've covered quite a lot on the podcast. Oh yeah. I still think one of my favorite things to cover was when we were discussing Elon Musk and his flamethrowers for two hundred dollars. Yes. Uh that, that he was, is uh he's an evil genius. Yep. 
And I think I'm it's okay safe to that. say that I mean, at this point. I mean, I'm okay with that if it means that I get to have a flamethrower for only two hundred dollars. <laughs> but mean, you don't though. I, would, I I don't have one. I have chosen not to. Um, I've made that conscious adulting decision. I like heat a little bit more. Um, <laughs> I I like having a warm home <laughs> a little bit more when it's not on fire. Um. So yeah, I paid for oil instead of instead of the. Uh, flamethrower <laughs> but <clears throat> oh man and then sk- skipping ahead to to february of this year uh we said nintendo does remasters better was the episode title uh and we have warcraft 3 reforged and our notes just say big oof <laughs> uh that was when warcraft 3 reforged got released and people weren't happy because apparently it looks even worse than the original game did at launch. You know, yeah. com- comparatively to how graphics looked at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm so happy that we're actually here. Like, at 200 episodes. Yeah. Like, we've just been kind of going along. Wednesday is podcast night. Now that it's, you know, I have a normal ish schedule, you know, no more. Yes. Remember, in the I think beginning that's been where a big help. Wake- Remember when the beginning you were making, you were waking me up on Saturday mornings. Oh, yes. Yeah. We were doing a Saturday morning podcast and that like, legitimately uh, would wake me up on yeah. Saturday morning. Yeah. <laughs> I'd answer this and that we were on Skype too. And I was, we would do the Skype call and it, that would be what would wake me up. And I'd like get my setup done and be ready. And like, yes, that minutes. was, that was but, when we were doing it over Skype too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh boy. Discord so much better. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Uh, just, I had thought if I had more time, and if I had thought of it, um, my, I was like, you know, what if we did, what if we did a, like a, a montage clip? of like funny moments from past podcasts. Uh, And then I realized that's, you know, like 400 hours worth of content to sift through and uh, pick out what were the funny moments. Um, Yeah. And I don't have that time. (laughs) So, yeah, Uh, I mean, biggest things that have changed, obviously, are uh, there. There are since we started this, uh, there are, you know, Two humans, two other humans, and one canine living here. Yeah, uh, which is which is a an ab- absurdly bizarre thing to think about. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just, just it's just change. ballooned out, kind of a thing. Yeah. So yeah, and of yeah. course the fact that I have the financial stability in order to keep doing this and not have had to, you know, yep. move cross country. Yeah. Yeah. I'm that, very, that big, very, very, very thing. glad about that. Yeah. Very glad about that. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, we've been. So what are some going. things that we want to do that we want to shoot for by episode 300? So over the next two years. Yeah. <laughs> is I think for one, I'd like to get more guests on. Yeah, that was kind of one of my first th- thoughts is like, I'd like to get some more guests, um, even if it's like on get weeks that I can't record for whatever reason, like getting because I like I liked listening to the episode where you and Joey where it was just the two of you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and stuff like that. But yes, I would definitely like to get more guests. Um, yeah. Um, let me think. What else? And I don't know. I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's I mean, weird I'd like trying to, to get guests, right? Well, it's also like I'd like to have happier, you know, subjects to talk about sometimes, but we get what we're given for news and we it, It's always <laughs> dependent on what comes out that week. I mean, yeah. and, you know, granted, you know, if we wanted to take a little more editorial approach, we could choose you know, and, and actually 
write up segments and everything, but I don't know if we basically have the time with our day jobs, respective day yeah. jobs. Yeah. 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 Cause like, who knows? Uh, I may, I may end up going back to work and finding out that they've decided to go full in on podcasts and need somebody to, to do that or whatever. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm exactly going back to when I return to work. Uh, in but you'll like deal with it then. Weeks. Huzzah! <laughs> four weeks, five weeks, five weeks. Yeah. So. But. Yeah. yeah. I mean, one of the thing, one of the issues is Wednesday night seems to be a popular night for doing podcasts. Um, and so a lot of the folks that I would ask to be guests are currently involved in doing other shows. Yep. Like right now or soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah. I mean, here's some pie in the sky ideas, right? Yes, that pie if, in the sky. Let, let's say, let's do uh, unrealistic goals, and then okay. let's set some realistic goals. <laughs> um, and we're going to keep this in deep dive instead of going into quest log, because this is going to be podcast general. Yep. Uh, TM. Yep. Smite! Uh, so, I think... What would be interesting, and I'm going to get out some paper here. Oh, That's man. All written on. That's all written oh, on. Man. It's, I, oh, I, man. Uh, I was trying to do controller input for Warcraft, and I had to make a button map because the game's not made exactly for controllers. So in order to figure out what buttons do what, you have to map everything. And so I had to manually write it down. And then ultimately it never worked, so... Now I have like all these mm -hmm. sheets of paper that are just full with double-sided writing and everything. All right. I think what would be really fun is, and, and we're thinking absolute absurdity. Blow there up. is, there is no limit. Yeah. So we're yeah. going to, we're going to say no limits. Yeah. Like, uh, what was it? Two unlimited. Did that song back in the early nineties? I, I early early nineties. You expect me to have consciousness of the world around me. Um, <laughs> that that didn't happen. Well, until I think the it was too night. unlimited, but it might have been Twilight Zone, uh, <laughs> or something. I'm pretty sure it was too unlimited. Mm -hmm. So, Courtney, who yeah. is with with no restrictions, and let's say that we we can muster up enough clout to get anybody we want on this podcast. Who would you want on this podcast? I mean, it, the, the obvious answer is the entirety of Critical Role. Just as a collective? As the collective, yes. Um, including Brian W. Foster and Danny Carr. Like, um, I would honestly love to do like a doggo's, like doggo day and have like all of the cast with their pets. <laughs> with their dogs like that would be awesome um <laughs> oh, i think i would also like to be able to have are we just talking guests right now just guests yeah i think <clears throat> water <clears throat> i need that um yeah, like that's the first that's the first pie in the sky that kind of comes to me. Um because we don't talk politics on this one. Well, I mean cuz if we could I'd love to have uh Elizabeth Warren or AOC. I would really love to have AOC on. I mean <laughs> she she is a gamer. We can so... write that down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do Yana. think using, I think using Twitch and using gameplay as an engagement device. Oh, yeah. To then talk about policy is an interesting choice and I mm -hmm. think is an effective choice for. Absolutely. And this is not even what your views are, but the idea of using it as a way to essentially get the message out on what policies it's, it's you want another, to support. It's another and, platform. Yeah. 
it's another it's another unedited platform where you can you know take your views and ideas and and all of that and just get it out well and... it's technically not unedited well uh, yeah. i say this because also twitch is updating their terms of service to basically supposedly take a stronger stance on um harassment bullying of uh, various forms um yeah uh that goes into effect in january i believe on january 22nd so they're mm -hmm. going to take an even stronger stance um and do things like looking at the context in which things are said, um, whether mm -hmm. people have been banned and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, so even like of using emotes to harass somebody um, will be looked at. So. Uh, but I don't think that I think that terms of use and like. That, that's just what I mean in terms of like, technically, there is some editing going on um, because. If a platform were to include views that could be construed as problematic. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's using that term perhaps lightly. Um, yeah. You know, that might pose some difficulty in sharing that on Twitch. Yes. But for the most part, there's, there's a difference when you're streaming live and saying, you know, what you'd like to say, so long as it is continuously within the, uh, terms and service agreement, but that's more, I don't want to call it censoring because that's not really what it is. It's more being mindful of where you are and what your audience is. Yeah. It's, it's like why you don't hear, um, politicians in America swearing on the floor of Congress. Like they don't cuss most well, of the I time. I think there's also technically there's like procedure in decorum. I yeah, want to say yeah, laws, decorum. But there we go. There are rules yeah, of decorum. decorum. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's essentially what it is. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, no, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's the whole somebody you don't that's cuss in front of kids. Somebody that's using video. Twitch and games uh, as an engagement device. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yep. Yeah. That's, any other any other pie nice. in the sky guest ideas? Well. LeVar Burton. <laughs> okay. Like, I'm trying to think. I'm like, okay, wait a second. Nope, Bob Ross is gone. This, nope, this nope, is where nope, we Mr. get to Rogers. see we get to see the tiny mouse that lives in Courtney's head run through the maze trying to get the cheese. You legit are. No, because I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, Bob Ross isn't here anymore. Steve Irwin isn't here anymore. You know, all of these, you know, Jim Henson isn't here anymore. Pretty, by definition, all of those people on that graph that is usually included are not here anymore. Yes, except for LeVar. He's still here. <laughs> yeah, I, him. <laughs> I'd love okay. to have him. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, I, yeah, I mean... I mean, I'd love to have like celebrities, like actors on, um, but like nobody is truly like hundred percent. Like Natalie Dormer would be amazing to have on, but I don't know. Let's say I don't know how much of a gamer she is, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Wouldn't know. But yeah, if we're going pie in the sky, like, yeah, let's let's do that. <laughs> um, what about I mean, you, if Sean? that's what we're basing it on, uh what's um uh Henry Cavill? Mm-hmm. Yep. Like at this point, I'm not just a gamer, like it's like when you're when you're a big Witcher fan and then you get to play Geralt, like Come on. I mean, it's like Ryan Reynolds and, and Deadpool, like. <laughs> Very much so, yeah. Yeah, kind of the same thing. <laughs> you know, it's it's the it's the tank top that cost him what was it, ten thousand dollars or something? What? Um, <laughs> yeah, no, Ryan Reynolds, um, in Deadpool, when he wore that tank top of, um, B. Arthur, they actually needed. 
the rights to be able for him to wear that shirt. And it cost them $10,000. And he ended up being the one just, he just paid it. He was like, no, I want, this is exactly what he would be wearing. What? What is is it because of like a likeness thing? Uh, It is, it is a, it is a rights to likeness thing. And he talked with her family about that. And then he made a um, charitable donation in her name with their like permission. If, if you do this, then you can do it. That's Deadpool has become such a weird, like the film itself outside of like the whole internet memeing thing, Mm -hmm. like the making of that film has become such a weird cultural phenomena. Oh, I think it's great. Yeah. I think it's great. Like, like it's to show what you can do if you give creators. I don't want to call it free reign, but just the ability to. You give creators the ability to actually create. Yeah. To do what they want with, you know, a little bit of, you know, obviously because you're going to have some sort of constraints and realistically people often work better when you have some limits. Yes. You know, and that's, that's the, because if you have too much freedom, you know, you get the star Wars prequels, uh, where, you know, you need somebody to kind of rein it in a little bit and just say, yeah, these are your constraints. Like you can't just run buck wild. Um, but what can you do with these constraints? And, you know, people that are really innovative will come up with great stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, but um, all right. So we got we got the no limits. <laughs> Look at that. It's speaking of limits, now yeah. How about some realistic choices, folks? That think- if we were to if we were to send an email, you know, mm-hmm. a professional email stating, you know, we do this podcast. Uh, you know, and, uh, unfortunately, folks, this is this is a little inside baseball for for the podcast, but. You but know, this also, is this is to see possibly who we can get for you to listen to. Yeah. Over the next two so, years. The thing that that we've that we've continually come across is that people have a rough time on Wednesdays because it is becoming that popular podcast night. Well, and um, I mean, that's so this is something where if we really wanted to, we, we could, could change the adjust the schedule date. a little around to work around somebody's schedule. You know, and it yeah, means and, we might not this, have you, but we might have a guest. You know, in your or place, it may kind of. be like we record it earlier in the week and play it on Wednesday night. Um, I mean, that's another thing. Yeah, is that I? You know, we could we that could way we record the interview at the a actual... different time and then edit it into a live broadcast. Yeah, yeah. But um, but that would be like I would really love to have Joey on again. Um, I think. T- And this is very simply, we live in the days of COVID now, Mm -hmm. where more people are um, used to logging onto Zoom and Discord and other, like, chat services. Like, I don't, I genuinely don't think this is pie in the sky to see if Chris Perkins or Kate Welch is, like, well. So funny available. you should say that is I have actually asked Kate and um, right now, say, especially I know with, that you've asked Kate with starting the new job, um, her schedule is very busy. I know. And it's and it's a matter of, you know, oh, well, if it ever, you know, she ever became available. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can also say. Uh, so I would I would Chris Perkins is more of a no limits, especially since he doesn't. So currently he does not have good Internet at home. And thus is why oh. he is not doing anything uh, as far as streaming or whatever related. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. But Plus, I don't think we have the clout to get Chris Perkins, Courtney. I'm sorry. <laughs> it never hurts to send an email. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, I'm going to put mm-hmm. uh, one your friendo uh Janaea Kemper on the list. Yes. Calling you out, Janaea. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh currently working um teaching say, if... game design. 
and using tabletop RPGs, um, and more so LARPing, um, to explore um, one's personality and um, uh, if uh, an idea known as emancipatory bleed, um, which is, I hope I'm really hoping I'm not misconstruing it because if I am, that's very embarrassing. Um, but the idea of it taking a look at yourself and what sort of stuff that you feel and what sort of stuff that you're dealing with and it bleeding out into a character and allowing you to, I don't want to say like work During through it as session? if it was therapy, but a little bit of like therapeutic stuff going on um, where you can kind of address some of those things through play. Hey, play therapy is a thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. But, you know, I'd like to have a couple more sessions uh, or a couple more episodes with friends to the podcast, uh, Matthew Tuck, um, or Tucker, and um, with our friend Heather as well. Those are wonderful conversations that we've had with them, and I really want to have another. Yeah, and I think especially, um, you know, looking at a, a local focus, because I know mm -hmm. most of our audience uh, and most of our, you know, you dear listeners. I'm assuming the vast majority of you have some connection to the Berkshires. Yeah. Um, and so. You know, folks that are are sort of in the the geek community and the nerdy community, local to here. Um, so, I mean, possibly maybe even uh, Nico White, who owns Purple Dragon, up in Williamstown. I mean, at the very least, talk about what it's like running a a game store in yeah a place like the Berkshires, uh, yeah. which is. Is a little bit of a unique, bizarre microcosm in the United States. <laughs> it's an I experience. don't know if there are truly any places quite like it. Uh, listeners, if you are not, um, and you you and you read up on the Berkshire and you're like, hey, wait a minute, uh, you know, I I know of places totally like that. Um, definitely write us. Uh, you can write me at uh, Sean at 8-bitadventures.com and let me know. Because um, I'm definitely interested in hearing more places. Um, so uh, to clarify, the Berkshires are, it focuses on like cultural and artistic tourism with a lot of sort of service sectors um, that are involved in healthcare and retail. Um, it's kind of a, it's like a cultural resort community. Um, that caters largely to second homeowners that have money. I was say, yeah, we have a lot of people who who season as a verb here. Yeah, second um, homeowners with money coming they, from they, New York City and Boston. Um, but that it was also uh, a heavy manufacturing past that has since died off and sort of left uh, a bleak economic footprint. So that's that's. So Yay. That's a nice way to not put to, it, not Sean. To drag that's that. a very nice and, and that's a very <laughs> nice way to put it. But the rest of us here are just making a work. So teaching, <laughs> trying to teach the community about what exactly podcasts are. Oof. <laughs> I remember those meetings. Uh, so, yeah. 200 episodes. 200. Woo! We did it. We We're gonna keep doing it. did it. And we're going to uh, keep doing bicentennial. it. Bicentennial. You know, if you talk about episodes as years instead of yeah. years as years. We need a word for that. Like by episode what count. A, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's still just episode 200 or 200 episodes. Yeah, but we need a term for it. We need a term for it. We need a term for it. That'll... That'll be one of the things on our on our list for quest log is by next week, we're going to come up with a word <laughs> for measuring things by episode number. So that you could but say, you, you know, by cent episodal. Or something. 
That sounds better because that doesn't sound well. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking that's, of which, that's... guess what, Courtney? Yeah. It's time for quest log. Woo! So quest log is where we talk about our goals. So we talk about goals for the podcast, right? And and who we'd like to get on and who we'd like to talk to. Um, quest log is about our personal goals uh, over the past week, not over the past, you know, not over the next two years. Um, I think this time, Courtney, I will go first. Okay. Then. Normally I let you go first, but I think I want to get my stuff out there. Okay. Uh, mostly because I did nothing. <laughs> I didn't get anything done aside from completing one of my two bonus goals completed, which was I finished the Revendreth storyline, but that's just because I've been playing a lot of Warcraft uh, at the expense (laughs) of doing my other goals. So yeah, uh, this is the, the the tale of Sean Hayes and the infinite sadness of procrastination. Um, So yeah, I got pretty close to clearing out my podcast backlog. Um, I have like three episodes left. Um, I ended up just throwing out a bunch because uh, I wasn't really interested. I'm like, I started to listen to the episode. I'm like, I'm not really feeling this. I'm not going to. Yeah, not going to waste time. And uh, yeah, so next week I'm going to once again, color a chapter one comic and do an item icon for uh, for glory and pie cake in 8-Bit Adventures game. Sounds like yeah, that's why I wanted. I didn't really have much for for next week, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my turn. Your turn. Okay, so I'd set about three goals last week. Uh, one of them was finishing the semester, which I did. My my presentation went great. Now I'm just waiting to get grades in, um, and I have not wrapped any gifts. Um, but I did get my cards ready. My cards are done and going out in the mail tomorrow morning. Um, so I, I'm counting that as 1.5 completed um, because I'm waiting for my critical role wrapping paper to come in. Um, and yeah, we're not going into that further, but <laughs> I'm just waiting for it to come in still. Um, and then I can wrap my gifts and mail out the ones that need to be mailed out. Otherwise I am playing the gift giver Wednesday before Christmas and delivering things within Berkshire County. Um, but I didn't get any real progress in Pokemon shield crown tundra. I, I, I barely touched my switch cause I was getting rid of everything done with everything. And now I'm just trying to not hurt. It's okay, <laughs> this Courtney. I, weather is I haven't really played all that much Switch either. Um, yeah. It's basically, you know, been like the 15 minutes for Animal Crossing to just do yep. the daily, daily stuff. Maybe doing a dungeon in Darkest Dungeon. Yeah. But all of my other gaming time has been World of Warcraft. Yeah, I, uh, I did... I did binge the paradise again this weekend. Um, it's, it's 16 hour long episodes from BBC about the first 16 hour hundred. long episodes. How do they expect people to finish an episode? Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> I did a season a night. <laughs> a, a, a whole season episodes. of 16 hour long episodes. No, it, for, each, for folks who don't no, get the humor. The seri- the series is is 16 episodes in total. Um, the first season is eight. The second season is eight. Yeah. Um, I did a season a night. <laughs> um, I'm just I'm thinking almost of what, done with Amer- what some sort of uh, film, because it would be a film that 16 hours yeah. long would look like. I want to say somebody did one. Um, I would say it would need at least two intermissions. Oh, you'd need more than that. Three. Films that are like two and a half hours used to have intermissions, Courtney. I know. That's just you need much. like five. Yeah. I think in some places Avengers Endgame had an intermission. 
I wouldn't be surprised. And possibly the Lord of the Rings films. I mean, at that point for Lord of the Rings, though, it's yeah, it's just go be, go pee and, and fill up your uh, popcorn bucket again. Although kind of at a certain point, like. I don't know, I feel like you could just leave and come back at a certain point and you probably wouldn't have missed much. I think that depends if you've gone if you're going to the movies with somebody or if you're going by yourself. Yeah, because I've gone to the movies by myself quite a bit. And there are times when you can tell if you could run and go and come back and nothing would be missed. But sometimes you you really don't want to miss anything. Even if you just get back in the the person that you're at the movies with says they're still walking up the hill. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, you might miss like. Like very, very profound moments. But it might be stuff that like doesn't necessarily move the plot. Yeah. Like Sam Spiel, yeah. you know, about stories. Like, that's a very moving and great moment. But, like, I mean, it's just dialogue. Yeah. Like, it doesn't move the plot forward or anything. Yeah. It doesn't help them get to Mordor. But, you know. <laughs> or, uh, I mean, the, whole, the entire intro to Fellowship of the Ring. Like, you don't miss anything. Yeah. So. Yeah. But, yeah. But um, but yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at. So my goals are to I would like to get some more time in on Pokemon, um, and get those gifts out and mailed out and wrapped up and everything ready to go. Um, I'm trying really really hard this year to actually be as close to on time as is able to in the age of COVID. So. Yeah, well, hopefully the age of COVID will be done by summer next year. Just hoping. So only another 3,000 years of it. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty soon some people will be able to say that they have like not left their house in a year. And it'll be March when people have said, I haven't left my house since last year. I thought you were going to say that people will start like like seriously quoting the line from Lord of the Rings where it was like, I was there, Gandalf, 3,000 years ago. I mean, absolutely. Before the COVID. Unfortunately, I'm an essential worker, so life hasn't stopped for me. (laughs) I mean, you know, we're both essential as well, so. Yeah. Which just makes it weirder with with a babby. So at this point, like, everything's just been turned upside down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, I think that's it for this for episode two hundred, Sean. Woo! Yeah, I know. I I have seen on other stuff where uh, where it was another podcast that I followed, the Angry Chicken Hearthstone podcast. Back when the original Hearthstone crew was there, they would they would actually like Skype in and like say hi and congratulate them. <laughs> uh, one member of the Hearthstone team, uh, Young Wu. Um, who's now at second dinner, uh, would, uh, as a challenge, do a number of push-ups equal to the number of episodes. Uh, I say this to say I'm not doing that. <laughs> like he would offer to do 200 push-ups on stream uh, to <laughs> as as a way to celebrate 200 episodes. Um, I'll do like 200 like finger push-ups. Like, eh. Yeah, you know. Um So yeah, thank you everyone for joining us for this very special episode. Um Yeah, I know I know we kind of talked a little bit about like, oh, what do we want to do with the show and everything? But you know, hopefully we'll be able to get some of these guests on. Who knows? Maybe I uh, Maybe things are weird now and we're able to get some of these no limit guests. Uh, I don't think. we're. Yeah, but uh, it never hurts to send an email. <laughs> you know, it never it never hurts because um, who knows? Just like just like a second si- set of eyes never hurts when you're looking for something. It never hurts to send out an email. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, so stay tuned. You know, for the next two yeah. years, see if uh, see if we get any of those guests. Um, and yeah. 
Speaking of World of Warcraft, um, so this week when I'm streaming, I will be streaming World of Warcraft Shadowlands this week um, because um, so kind of the new dungeon, there's like a solo dungeon um, out where it uses um, ideas from roguelikes. Um, so you go through and like you pick up um, different augmentations to your abilities and um, each time you go, it's randomized and, um, you know, as you progress through and you go up like floors, the floors get harder and harder. So you're having to pick up these abilities and you're trying to like basically build your character as you go up through the floors, um, to, to do it well. So that's been really fun. Um, so I'm going to stream that this week because that's what I want to play. Uh, instead of anything else. So um, so that'll be uh, Saturday night, as usual. Um, and basically, depending on how, you know, December goes, I might look at <clears throat> putting another game stream back up. You know, get it back, get back into a more of a rhythm of doing doing content. I mean, who knows, maybe doing an art stream that goes into a, a game stream. Maybe doing art for the first nice. hour and then cutting and mm -hmm. redoing or cutting and, and mm -hmm. going back over to, to games. Yeah. Who knows? We shall see. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Um, cool, cool. As with other news, uh, just concerning 8-Bit Adventure stuff, um, we still don't have a timetable for Tales of Jamora as that is COVID dependent. Um, yep. As well as Berkshire Bites. <laughs> so... Those shows yeah, will come they back. Yeah, just shut down stuff again. <laughs> those shows will come back at some point. Um, I mean, well, it's also a case of trying to, we may have to do a special episode of Berkshire Bites when everything opens back up, Megan and I, uh, just mm -hmm. to talk about what's still here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Although that's sad. We don't want to end on a sad note. So those shows will come back at some point, folks. So if you were yes. a big fan of them, don't worry. We haven't forgotten about you. We we want them to come back as much as you do. Um, and we've got some ideas on how to bring Tales of Jamora back and, and a way to have it a little more structured. So um, we are still talking about it. Yes. So, thank you all for joining us. That is going to wrap up our 200th episode. Uh, so if you want to see more content from 8-Bit Adventures, be sure to check out 8-BitAdventures.com over there. You can find comics, artwork, podcast streams, and more. Um, if you want to help support that content, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash 8-BitAdventures. Uh, big shout out and thank you to all of our current patrons. Thank you so much for basically being here since the beginning um, and for, for all of your support. Um, you have definitely made this venture and other ventures possible. Um, our opening theme is one up by professor shy guy. Um, actually that would be a great person to get on. That would be <laughs> Let me write that down. Uh, you can find his work over at professor shy guy. Um, he, uh, is a chiptune artist. So if you are interested in sort of like, uh, sort of classic NES, sounding music. Um, he does some covers and reimaginings of songs, but he also has his own original content, which is pretty exciting. You don't usually see that with a lot of like chiptune artists. They typically do remixes of like other stuff. Um, yeah. but he does like original songs, um, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, so go give him, uh, some show, go show him some love. Um, and as always have fun, everyone. Happy gaming and enjoy your pie cake. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for being with us for 200. Let's shoot for another 200 more. <laughs>